Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Glad to be with you for this week's edition of Takedown. Well, it's that time of year where there might not be a lot of wrestling going on the mats, but let me tell you what, there's a lot of action behind the scenes. Tony Hager took a road trip to Cedar Falls recently to catch up with a coach who's been plenty busy over the last couple weeks. Doug Schwab just had twin girls, and if that's not enough, he's also preparing for his team's transition to the Big 12. We talked with the Panthers head man about that and wrestling's place in the Olympic Games. Well, so the big news of the Twins, big news that you're in the Big 12. You know, is this a, I didn't even know this was something that was in the works. Is this something that happened, uh, you guys been working on for a while or did it just happen? You know, when we first moved to the MAC, we were trying to go to the Big 12 first. Um, you know, and, and Big 12 really wasn't looking for any affiliate members at the time and then they went down to four and like, well, we can't just have um, four members. You know, we need we need to have we need to have more so we can get more, I guess, get our automatic spot, but then also have more qualifying spots. Um, so then they started looking, and we know we had the five year deal. We it was a great move to move to the MAC, um, but sitting down after the season and talking with with David and, and Justin administration and coaches just seemed like the the best fit for us and the best thing for us as a program moving forward too. You know, just. I don't. I love having an in-state rival. I mean, that, I think that's a. I think this it adds a whole other element to it. I love that there's one of the best teams in the country every year. And not that Missouri wasn't, but I mean, you go to Oklahoma State. We're going down to Gallagher Iowa this year. You know, we look look forward to that. And in perennially, Big Twelve has been one of the best conferences. You know, I know it was down a little bit last year, um, but it's not gonna it's not gonna stay there. I mean, it's 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 gonna bounce back, and it's gonna be one of the best conferences in the country, and and we're gonna be part of that. Um, as somebody that's been a part of it, uh, it was just recently announced about the Olympics. We're losing 56 fewer spots, 55, somewhere around there. Um, the Olympics is our, the pinnacle of our sport. Um, there's been some coaches that have been vocal and are kind of behind doors that said, you know, do we really need the Olympics for our sport? Is there, can we go somewhere else? I mean, is that even an option for as somebody that's been a part of it? To, could you think of us not being in the Olympics and doing something else? when we're going to lose it, how far, how hard did we fight? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I guess what, what why is everything changed? What, what I guess would be the alternative. I mean, I don't know. I guess I don't, I don't, I don't agree with them. I mean, it is a pinnacle of our sport. You know, and guys say, well, world championships is world champion. I was just looking at something, that, you know, 2001, um, I was just looking, I mean, how many people know Brandon Ingram was even a silver medalist in the world championship. And I, that's not, that's not a knock on him. I'm just saying like people, people don't really care about the worlds. And I actually had this debate with one of my assistant coaches, because, you know, I said 2007 made the world team. You know, two people reached out. Once made the Olympic team, it's a whole different world. It just, it just is. I mean, it just resonates so much, and it's just a broader scope. It's once every four years. And there's – I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a kid in the U.S. That, that – I mean, if, would it be a world champ or Olympic champ? Which one do I want to be? And obviously the world is tougher because, you know, now you've got 16, only 16 teams that can go to the, the Olympics. The world is open to everybody, but – um, I don't know, I guess what, why do they think we don't need the Olympics? So, I mean, what, <laughs> I don't want to take that imagination. I don't want to take that away from, you know, I got an eight, nine year old boys and maybe I got a couple of girls that maybe are going to wrestle. I don't, I don't want that to not be, I guess, in, in the back of their head of being a possibility, you know, and that they can have the imagination of being maybe a world or, or they can be an Olympic champ. They have that potential in the sport of wrestling. Um, and it's, it's one of the, it's one of the core sports. You know, I just think, Obviously, things are getting way off uh, as far as what, hey, we're about viewers, we're about making money, we're about this, we're not about really what, to me, what the games are supposed to be about, you know, the, the true, true sports, it's, it's corrupt, it's money, it's all those things, so, you know, wrestling can lose out, and we, we got to, I guess, stop shooting ourselves in the foot, you know, in, in some of the ways that, some of the things that, that I guess we're doing is, as far as a sport too, though, you know, I mean, I, though that's crazy, though. I don't know what I don't know what they would. What's the alternative? Well, Bellator has added another elite level wrestler to its roster. We'll catch up with Logan Storling. That's after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey General Store. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting 
Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately a thousand dollars a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting and you should too. All right, welcome back. This portion of our program brought to you by Pure and Clean Sports. Logan Storley is taking the next step in his pro MMA career. The four-time All-American is signed with Bellator MMA and will make his debut July 14th. As first reported by MMAfighting.com, the 24-year-old will take on Kemyel Haley at 170 pounds. We talked with the former Minnesota Gopher about his rapid rise in MMA. I'm 5-0. and I got five finishes, four of them in the first round. Uh, so it's going well, um, just improving, but you know, now it's time to take the next step. It's really time to take the next step and start fighting the best guys in the world. And, um, you know, letting everyone see, you know, this is what I've been doing the last two years. And, you know, I'm very confident in my abilities and I train with the best guys in the world and I know where I'm at. So now we're here and we're signing with Bellator a year, you know, over a year and a half later. And now it's time to, uh, hit that next level. And, you know, you just keep hitting level after level and continuing to get better and doing things the right way. Uh, you're going to be making your debut with Bellator on July 14th at Bellator 181. You're going to be meeting uh, Kemyal Haley, or Haley, pardon me. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on your opponent, and uh, how did the how did this particular fight come into being? <clears throat> um, you know, he's, uh, I think he's 7-4. and four. Um I've watched a little film on him. You know, he wrestles. Um, with, you know, at, come the last two weeks, I'll look at some things, make sure, you know, if there's anything that surprises us or we see on tape, we'll we'll talk about it and discuss it. But right now, um, it's just about getting better for me is working on my striking, keeping my wrestling um, clean and uh, not losing, uh, losing any strides. You know, I see a lot of wrestlers that are in their, you know, a couple fights in and, they start, their wrestling's not as sharp anymore. And so that's one thing I've definitely, um, you know, I'm a wrestler first. And so, uh, you know, I'll, I'll always take care of my wrestling because, you know, I love wrestling and without it, you know, I wouldn't be here. So I'm going to keep that sharp and continue to work on my hands. And, but, you know, I'm, I'm confident July 14th, I'll go out there and I will get the win and I will stop him once again and make it six opponents. And then, um, we'll see what Bellator has in store for me next. Princeton's head coach, Chris Ayers, has announced the promotion of longtime assistants Sean Gray and Joe Dubuque. With a combined 12 years on Ayers' staff, the two have played a major part in the program's resurgence and recent success. The Tiger Center record seven athletes to the 2017 championships and finished in the top 25 for just the sixth time in school history. Here's Sean Gray and Joe Dubuque on their elevation to associate head coaches. In regards to, you know, just how it's going to affect Princeton, uh, it's going to be, you know, I think it's going to be business as usual. You know, it's not like it's going to be, you know, we're going to just change everything that we do uh, just because we have a new title. Um, but I think it, it does show our guys uh, that, you know, the head coach is very confident in his assistants that, you know, he would give us this promotion. Um, and I think he's going to definitely uh, give us a little bit more uh, room to, you know, maybe take on some of those uh, head coaching responsibilities, uh, maybe just give us some experience in that aspect. So uh, for me, I, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm so grateful, um, you know, to, you know, uh, of Chris and, and Princeton and, and Molly Marcou, who's our uh, athletic director. So, um, you know, good things are coming. You know, we're, uh, we're, all, we're all excited about this new change. You know, it's an honor, and, and I think you had, had mentioned this, too. I mean, it's it just says a lot about Coach Ayers, uh, who he is as a person. Um, 
and and just what he's done here with the program has been um it's been incredible to be around uh the exciting thing for me is you know i get to work with you know two other the best coaches in the country we have so much fun and um you know i can i can promise you this scott the best the best things are right in front of us for this program and uh you know we're going to keep climbing so thank you very much all right quick time out back after this you're watching takedown thanks to mcbride max This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure. Stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show brought to you by Powerade. The National Wrestling Hall of Fame has released the next edition in their series on the distinguished members of the class of 2017. A five-time junior nationals champ, Andre Metzger won two national titles and was a four-time All-American for the Oklahoma Sooners. He went on to a successful senior level career, winning a Greco World Silver Medal in 86 and World Bronze in 79 and 87. Metzger is now a full-time coach, guiding the new Greco program at the University of North Texas. I played basketball until I was in high school and and then started wrestling after that. I just tried out for the team and continued to get to try out. My parents were great for me. My dad really loved the sport of wrestling. He wrestled also. My freshman year was, was a learning experience. I believe I was like 27 and 8 in the uh, folk style. And then I went out and wrestled uh, Greco-Roman and freestyle. When I did that, my dad was very supportive in that he brought me to many tournaments. When I was going to those tournaments, I lost my first 20 matches. And then I continued my sophomore year. I started getting good enough to, uh, to really, really do the job. And me, I was just trying to get good in wrestling. I figured it was a lot easier to learn how to wrestle than it was to just cut weight. My sophomore summer, I won the, the Greco uh, Nationals, took third in the freestyles. Then I went on, and my junior year, made a, a junior world team and took second in the state. Junior year, I won the, the Junior Olympics, and I won the USWF also. In between my junior and senior year was a big change for me. I went to Japan. When I went to Japan, I trained. I trained at the Kodokan for judo. I'm a third degree Sandan, third degree black belt in judo. I also trained at Hosei University for wrestling. It was a big influence in that 
they taught me respect. They taught me a lot more about the depth of, of training and uh, really was something that, that helped change my life in, in, in the sport. My senior year, I went on and I, I believe I was undefeated. I won the state. I won both Greco and freestyle for junior Olympics, which was the AAU. I also won the USWF Greco and freestyle. I was the first five-time national champion in the USWF. I think the reason that I was able to become good so fast was one, because of believability. I, I believed that I could uh, beat a lot of people. My dad sent me to camps, which also gave me the ability to wrestle with other kids. And when I, when I was there, I really, really wrote down notes, studied the sport, picked up books, always reading about wrestling, why, looking at the pictures, learning the moves. A true student of the game in my book, always learning, always trying to be better in the sport, and was one of the toughest competitors that I've ever seen. I challenged myself constantly within my mind, uh, not just to do, utilize many, many techniques, but to, to, to dominate someone to not just score a point, but destroy them. I credit a lot of my success to the fact that I was disciplined. I didn't dissipate much. I, I, I wasn't a big partier. Of course, all of us have those opportunities, but I would rather be training than going out. So I went to the University of Oklahoma because of Jim Humphrey and Stan Abel. We went up there and Andre had like a list of 32 things he'd ask everybody. Gable and Chesbro and Harold Nichols, they're in his room right now. They've been up there the last couple of hours. And I said, wait, just freeze a minute. I said, but let me tell you, I'm the first one to admit that every one of these schools, the top four schools in the country at that time, uh, are in their living room and they all got great programs. Wherever you go, you've got a great chance to be a national champion. And I said, but I, want, uh, but I can save all this to you. I said, I think, unless they stop, that they would admit that we can develop you and become a national champion too. And I said, but I'll tell you why you're going to come to the University of Oklahoma. You like Jim Humphrey and you like me better than you do any one of these guys. And boy, you could have heard a pin drop. The end line was the color, <laughs> red and white. I like red and white better than I do black or orange. And I've never known anyone that was more intense or more tenacious than Andre. I mean, he wanted to beat you eating breakfast in the morning, playing video games, whether it was a run, <clears throat> six mile run, whatever it was, he wanted to beat you and he wouldn't stop until he, until he did. Jim was second in the world, had already placed second in the world. So Jim Humphrey was a big influence on me too, to uh, help me and, and develop my skills even further and my strength. You don't make national champions. You give them the opportunity to become one. You know, you give them the workout room, the facilities, the workout partners, the scheduling. Never one time during the four years I had him on that varsity team did I ever question his intent. He was just as sincere about wanting to be the best he could be as I was wanting him to be there. He was a two-time national champion, four-time All-American, and one of the hardest workers I've ever been around running the stadium stairs. He was always battling with Mark Schultz to see who would be first. And his tenacity was just unparalleled. I mean, he would just grind guys into the mat. He'd fight and fight and fight and just refuse to lose. And that's why he was such a great champion. My style is developed by, by becoming a sponge of knowledge and a filter of the information of the people that I, I have, have influenced me through this sport. So, the, the, I mean, I attest the, the, all the technique to never saying never, never stopping. If, you, if somebody says, well, I don't want to wrestle Greco, I don't want to do this, you know, there's so many people out there today that, that want, to, want to pick a style, they're calling it. I think if we become more diverse, I, I think we'll become stronger. And that's what I was. Six times I placed. Um, in the world. So I was a medalist four times, and uh, it's interesting that people say, well, that junior world, that wasn't a senior world level. Well, 
how many of them made the junior worlds. Uh, probably my strongest opponent was Fedzaev, uh, but I respect all my opponents. I respect everybody, fear nobody. Well, I, I feel like being inducted into the Hall of Fame is something that I've earned through my accomplishments in the sport of wrestling. And I appreciate it, all the people that decided uh, to put me into this, uh, the Hall of Fame. It's, it's, it, it means that I'm one of the people in this sport that have dedicated their athletic career to a sport that is, in my opinion, the greatest sport in the world. All right, special thanks to Doc Bennett and the staff at your National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Raul Ramirez stops by a little bit later on to talk catch wrestling. That's after this short break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Coca Cola. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. All right, welcome back. Our coverage continues with a very special guest in the Nike hot seat this week. Dr. Raul Ramirez joins us to talk about the upcoming Frank Gotch World Championships. Raul, welcome back. How are you? Yeah, doing well. Thank you for having me. Coming up, the annual Frank Gotch World Catch Wrestling Tournament in Humboldt, Iowa. What's the date, Doc? That'd be July 15th. July 15th. That's a beautiful Saturday in Humboldt. Of course, it's a weekend. We'll be celebrating wrestling. Kevin Dresser and a lot of the Iowa State coaches will be up in Humboldt that weekend as well. Tell us a bit about the origins of the Frank Gotch World Catch Wrestling Tournament. Well, the, the reason why we're in Humboldt, in, or even in Iowa in general, um, is because the greatest catch wrestler uh, that arguably li ever lived happened to be American and happened to be from Humboldt. His name was Frank Gotch. So he made his home there. Um, he was born and raised there. And uh, even though he became mega famous all over the world, he would always return to his home in Humboldt. So uh, we're there to honor him. And we're trying to repopularize the sport that he did because this sport, the sport of catch wrestling, really uh, influenced a lot of what we see today, like the Olympic freestyle wrestling, the, the collegiate folk style wrestling. It's, it's here because of these catch wrestlers and most famously Frank Gotch. He was very famous indeed. And that's what some of these guys are looking to do. Um, Curran Jacobs is largely regarded as one of the best catch wrestlers in the country. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think it's, it's his dedication to the sport. I mean, he has a really solid wrestling fundamental background from, you know, being um, a collegiate, a top collegiate wrestler. Um, but it's more than that um, because catch wrestling is, is a little bit different. We have a 20 minute time limit. There's, there's no restarts really like, you know, the ref's not going to blow the whistle and get you back up. Um, Curran um, has this tenacious quality where 
he he's like a real fighter so it he's he's real he's okay with whatever happens in a catch wrestling match you know because if he gets on the bottom he'll fight his way to get back out um and that that's what we see in catch wrestling there's they're like the ref's not going to save you so uh Kern has like that that spirit to be a really strong catch wrestler Raul, thank you very much for the time I, i'm looking forward to seeing you yeah likewise it's been too long all right, special thanks to the National Wrestling Hall of Fame, Doug Schwab, Raul Ramirez, and all of our guests on the program today. Like I tell you every week, you can find more wrestling news, interviews, weekly prizes, and the longest-running radio show in the sport anytime, absolutely free. It's all at TakedownWrestle.com. Until next week, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.